Hello everybody. Um, this is 2012 IMO problem number two. And I would like to thank uh, Irvin Majic uh, for uh, suggesting that I should solve this problem and pointing out uh, this question. Um, so uh, this is an inequality problem. We, we need to prove this inequality, uh, making use of this equation along the way and noting that uh, all these a sub i's are real numbers. Another thing to note is that the inequality is strict, something that we will be handling uh, along the way. Um, the, the problem actually turns out to be uh, not such a challenging problem in the sense of the mathematical depth and like um, the content that will be used. But at the same time, it needs some creative uh, activity. Um, and it turns out that you don't have to deal with all the terms on the left hand side of this inequality all at once, but rather we should be uh, focusing our attention on individual terms and seeing uh, what what kind of uh, inequality we can derive from from that from those individual terms. So that's kind of the the main point of this question. So let's consider any given uh, individual uh, term. So 1 plus a sub, say, k, uh, raised to the power k. Uh, the main trick uh, for this problem is to split the 1 at the beginning and into uh, k minus 1 terms, um, equal terms, I should say. So k minus 1 times 1 over k minus 1. Obviously, this product will still be equal to 1, so nothing fancy. And then uh, we keep that a to the k, a sub k term, and we still have to raise this to the k power. Now I will go ahead and make use of AMGM inequality right here. So this is the, an arithmetic mean, and I will convert it into a geometric mean. So the arithmetic mean side will be larger, so greater than or equal to, and don't forget that we have a k power here. So um, when we do the arithmetic mean of uh, when I say arithmetic mean, it's really a weighted arithmetic mean, if you will, or if you want. Uh, you can think of this as um, uh, k minus 1 terms of uh, 1 over k minus 1. So, so you have 1 over k minus 1 repeated k minus 1 times plus the, the k term, which is a sub k. So if you multiply all these terms uh, k minus 1 times, um, let's do that. And then finally multiply it out with this one. So that would give us 1 over k minus 1. Uh, raised to the power k minus 1 and then finally we will multiply it by a sub k. Remember that I need to take the k root of this expression because we have k terms in total k minus 1 of these and then 1 of a k. But then because we are also taking the k power of that, oh sorry for that, <laughs> and then obviously there is, I was supposed to divide it by k this expression uh, because it's part of the uh, am uh, arithmetic mean side. However, as you can see, uh, it's missing. So th th there must be a k uh, that needs to be repeated also k to the k times. Does that make sense? I mean, k k times. So, um, so therefore, there, there's also this k to the power k that I shouldn't forget. Does that make sense? Because we have k minus 1, uh, 1 over a k, 1 over k minus 1s. And then we have this one. So in total, we have k terms. So I need to divide it by k, but that's missing, right? So as a result, on the GM side, I need to make sure that I include those terms. And yeah, so and then we have the k power as a, as usual. Um, and that's it. So therefore, if you want, we can rewrite it one more time, just to be more organized, k to the power k, uh, divided by k minus 1, raised to the power k minus 1 times, a sub k. Now we can go ahead and, because this works for all k, substitute into this expression starting from k equals 2 all the way up to k uh, equals n and that uh, and multiply all these things, right? So, uh, okay, so therefore we have the left hand side uh, is uh, greater than or equal to left hand side of the, of the of this thing, right? So basically this part. Uh, is greater than or equal to based on uh, greater than or equal to k to the power k divided by k minus 1 
to the power k minus 1. Oh boy, <laughs> I should have started from 2, right? Starting from 2 all the way up to n, sorry for that. Okay, so when you plug in 2 to this expression, you get 2 uh, square divided by 1 to the 1, which we can just omit, times 8a eight, eight, eight sub 2, times, well, plugging in 3, we'll get 3 cubed divided by 2 squared, so times a sub 3, and so on. If you plug in n minus 1, the one before the last one, we would get n minus 1 raised to the power n minus 1 divided by n minus 2 raised to the power n minus 2 times a sub n minus 1. And finally, n to the power n divided by n minus 1 to the power n minus 1 times a sub n. Now we realize that quite a few terms are cancelling in this expression. The two squares, the three cubes, well, it's in the next term. And then the, the this term will be cancelling with the previous one, this term with this one. So what will be left from the constants would be n to the n. And we still have a sub 2 times a sub 3 all the way up to a sub n. a sub 2 times um a sub 3 all the way up to a sub n but now it's time to make use of the equality condition so this whole thing is just equal to 1 and that is n to the power n and it seems we got the desired result except that remember early on we suggested that uh, we need to emphasize um, the strict inequality here well because what we did is we we applied uh, amgm to the individual terms uh, one after the other um, so apparently for this thing to hold as an equality all these amgms all these n minus 1 amgm inequalities should hold with equality conditions and if you remember equality condition for amgm is each of the components of the uh, of your terms should be equal to each other so for instance under the first bracket let's write it down here so we have 1 over k minus 1 1 over k minus 1, 1 over k minus 1, and finally a k. So how many 1 over k minus 1s? We have uh, k minus 1 of these. Uh, of these. And so each of these terms should be equal to each other. So all of them are obviously equal to each other. Uh, the only thing which is not is this one. So we need to make sure that a sub k is equal to 1 over uh, k minus 1 for all k starting from 2 all the way up to n and now uh, let's see if such a thing can 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 be true so um just plug it in uh, so we we start with 1 over uh, 2 minus 1 so times um, what I want to see is uh, if uh, if such a thing is possible right well uh, it still sets needs to satisfy this equation right so therefore I want to just see if, if, if that's even possible so 1 over uh, 2 minus 1 times 1 over 3 minus 1 all the way up to 1 over n minus 1 and we are hoping we are hoping that this thing is uh, equal to 1 and I think uh, everybody um, is clear on that that it's it's not gonna work well it might have worked if n was equal to 2 actually this is the only con time it can work but going back to the uh, uh, bounds uh, we realize that that that's not the case uh, only if n is equal to 2 which is obviously not true which is not true because the question clearly says n greater than or equal to 3 so therefore we see that equality condition cannot hold um, for all of them right so it has to break um, and as a result uh, this should be the, the, the desired inequality is a strict inequality so that's one way to approach this problem uh, an alternative way to approach it is again uh, the fact that we will be uh, isolating individual terms let's focus again on a single term just the way that we did earlier and instead um, because it works for all these uh, real numbers uh, a sub i's uh, I will think of this whole expression as a function in x where I replace a sub k with x and see from there if I can get a similar uh, inequality just just the way we, we we got it okay so therefore uh we have this term now uh, k minus one so uh, um sorry so uh, what was the, that term here so one plus sorry what am i thinking okay so we have this function now f of 
f of x equals k, uh, 1 plus uh, a sub k. I'm replacing it with an x raised to the power k. Now you can think of uh, functional analysis and how to draw this uh, on a picture. Well, I will start from minus 1. Um, well, if I start from minus 1, minus 1 will hit will hit 0, obviously. Um, and then it will it will just rise. Obviously, we have a, um, well, it's not as steep as the exponential function, right? Because, because this is just a polynomial. So let, let's redo it. So I don't know, maybe something like this. Okay, good. Um, I'm not sure what will happen after minus 1. It can bend up words if k is even. But if k is odd, it can go down just the way like the... Um, like x cube or something like that. So there are two options uh, depending on if k if k is even and if k is odd. But luckily that's not something I'm concerned with. Uh, so probably there's more curve here. Okay, there you go. Um, so what do we do next? Well, I need to show that this is uh, greater than or equal to an expression, a constant expression. And it turns out that uh, it's kind of reminds me of the uh, tangent line trick, if you will. You can draw this tangent line uh, who um, with uh, going through the origin. And there you go. Uh, so the tangency point is right here. And let's say that this line is y equals just uh, I'm j and this solution is just from one of the AOPS users from AOPS website. I got this. Uh, I forgot the username. Sorry for that. But the, the main idea is uh, so the equation of this. I'm using the same notation, so you can follow it from there as well if you want to. Uh, y equals l x. Okay, so we have our original function here, and then this tangency function, which is obviously uh, always less than uh, our uh, our function itself. Uh, well, at least uh, for values of x greater than or equal to minus 1. But obviously, we are only concerned with a positive real value. So it is, um, so there's no problem. So therefore, what we claim is, uh, is that, uh, let's see. So it is clear that 1 plus x raised to the k power would be greater than or equal to uh, l times x. And I want to find the largest the largest L that would satisfy it. So basically, I'm I'm really focusing on the tangency, right? The equality condition here, equality condition. Um, well, equality for one value of X. So it's really not equality in that sense. But uh, you guys see the idea. So finding this uh, tangency point. So how do we do? We can use uh, calculus, if you will. Well, we can do it in two steps. Using calculus, uh, we know that because it's a tangency point here, the slope of this line and the slope of our curve should be equal at that point. And secondly, uh, because they share the same value for that value of x, if I calculate this value of x sub 0, and uh, I can plug it into both functions, and again, I would get a second uh, equation. And solving them simultaneously, I should be able to uh, find the value of l, which I can just plug it in here. And we already know what to expect, right? So uh, from our analysis, so because we replaced here with x, so this is our x in a sense. So this would be the value of L. So hopefully uh, we, 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 we are pretty confident. Hopefully we can get that. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, take the derivative maybe uh, and then figure out what that point is and then, uh, and then plug it into the functions and set the values equal to each other as you can see in the picture. So setting uh, the derivative of... Uh, the uh, left hand side, so I mean, uh, of this function and setting it equal to the derivative of this one because they have the same tangency point here. So we have the derivative of our function is k times 1 plus x raised to the power k minus 1. Um, and then, um, and then hopefully that should be equal to the derivative of this expression, which is just l. Now it's just a matter of just a few minutes to just uh, calculate the value of x. So move k to the other side first, and then take 1 over k minus first power of both sides. All right, so um, that's neat. Um, and, well, you can further subtract 1 from both sides if you want. But for the time being, I, I'm happy with this result. Now I can go ahead and substitute this into this expression. 
and uh, in a similar way um, actually maybe I'm not happy with this expression so let's just go ahead and subtract one I think I will use make use of both of them okay so subtracting one will get this weird expression if you want what we can do further is to find the common denominator as well and and then okay so we'll do that in just a minute so let's go ahead and first we can substitute one plus x with uh, moving the minus one back to to here uh, we, we you know which expression so this expression so we would get uh, l uh, l to the power 1 over k minus 1 divided by k to the power 1 over k minus 1 and uh, well that's the 1 plus x part and then we take everything to the k power shouldn't be too hard to do that uh, what it does is actually let's just go ahead and do it immediately so we don't waste more space here so it would just make these both of these raised to the power k and uh, and then we uh, we want to uh, evaluate it so which we did and obviously this should be equal to l times plugging it here so therefore the oops the values would uh, would match huh? so they would be going to the same value of y sub 0 for instance uh, l times uh, x uh, or x i should say here uh, x is we just found it actually let's uh, let's uh, while doing it at also find the common uh, denominator maybe uh, and um, yeah so why not so the common denominator is k to the power 1 over k minus 1 and the numerator becomes l to the power 1 over k minus 1 minus um, minus just uh, k to the power 1 over um, k minus 1 indeed all right uh, I think uh, there are some uh, simplifications we can make here so this whole thing and this uh, denominator is gone so we still have k to the power k in the in the denominator altogether but um, yeah so we can just do cross multiplication that's the first thing that comes to mind maybe um, yeah so therefore let's start from here so on the left hand side um, well, we can even get rid of this guy. So after canceling it, so we would get just a one left here. Okay, so this thing is gone as well. So we have on the left hand side, we have L to the power one over K minus one. And on the right hand side, we have, well, we have K to the power K times these two terms. Uh, and um, yeah, so let's just you do it. 1 over uh, k minus 1 minus k to the power well we will just add them right so k to the power k uh, plus 1 over uh, k minus 1 yeah so uh, I think that should work I hope it does unless I messed up again um, of course I did of course I did mess up um, so yeah let's look at that so when I canceled these two terms I just said the denominator would cancel so never do in a rush hold on so this uh, term will move to the left hand side as a multiplication on the numerator and then when you take it to the denominator you will just subtract the exponent from this guy so what will be left inside would be k to the power k over k minus 1 minus 1 over k minus 1 which is k to the power k minus 1 over k minus 1 so which is just k not k to the k sorry for that not k to the k just k so all the exponent is gone so therefore uh, 1 plus but wait a second we already know what this means 1 plus uh, 1 over k minus 1 is just k minus 1 plus 1 which is just k over k minus 1 so let's just go ahead and write it like that k over uh, k minus 1 so we can now move the, the, the expression of interest in this case it's really the, the, the value of L which hopefully I will put it into this <laughs> and then we'll, we'll be able to huh? so um, so moving L to the to the to the left hand side maybe and then factoring out this common expression 1 minus k equals uh, minus k to the power k over k minus 1 oops, that's a minus and finally um, moving this guy to the left hand side and also switching these terms so that I can get rid of that minus sign we would get L to the power 1 over k minus 1 
uh, equals um, so we took that term to the right hand side as as into the denominator so we would get 1 minus k and in the numerator we still have k k to the power uh, to the power k over k minus 1 basically oh sorry so we decided to switch these two right so k swap those okay good um, and and then we can further take the k minus first power and that would give us l equals k to the power k divided by k minus 1 to the power k minus 1 and now that's a beauty so we can just substitute it here k to the power k k minus 1 raised to the power uh, k minus 1 times x now remember that x in the given expression in each individual term is the a sub, oops, a sub i's right so so therefore you would just replace it for instance with a sub 2 here and then uh a sub 2 here and then do the same thing for a sub 3 a sub 4 each one uh, and and this is pretty much well this is exactly the same inequality that we have solved earlier so earlier we did a mgm and now we just use this uh, tangent line trick which is uh, quite useful and and uh, that uh, we can finish the same way we did the first example with an impossibility of an uh, inequality in uh, weak inequality but rather a, a strict inequality awesome so hope you enjoyed it and looking forward to see you guys in our next lecture